I was about to. But then I froze the screen. I am recording. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so please comment about comment factoring. No, I did that with my grade 11. Never mind. Not you guys. All right, so I was reviewing grades with my grade 11 about the comment factoring they did in grade 10. And we talked about this is one of the most important, but um, often forgotten things to do. So we're looking at the number of terms. So when we're looking at common factoring, you're looking at taking out the greatest common factor. Remember that? Six, seven, eight, sometimes. Um, from, it has to come out of every term in the polynomial. So you're looking for a common number. Ooh, that's not what I want to do. You're looking for a common number that can be divided out of all the coefficients. Okay? Now, sometimes it will include a letter as well. Okay? So you're going to place the greatest common factor outside the bracket, and inside the bracket, you're going to write what's left over. Okay? So we're going to do the first one. So we're looking at the numbers 6 and 9. 6 and 9, and we are going to figure out what greatest common factor, what multiple of these is common between the number 6 and the number 9. Okay, so if you guys are doing the greatest common multiple, we're looking for that factor. Okay, so if I were, another way to do this is to write out the numbers in their prime factors. So 6 can be broken down into 2 times 3 times C, right? 2 times 3 gives me the 6 times C gives me the 6 C. And then 9 can be written as 3 times 3. So what's common? What can I take over there? 2 Okay. I can take out a 3, because there's a 3 here, and there's a 3 here, right? Can I take out two threes because there's two threes here? No, how okay. come? Because there's not two threes in this. It's got to be the same number and the same amount. So even though this one has an extra 3, it has to stay, because this one doesn't have the second 3 in it. Does that make sense to everybody? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that 3 and I'm going to put it on the outside. And what am I left with? So if I took this out and I took that out, what am I left with? 2C plus 3. So what I just did was I common factor it. So I took out a factor that was common. So not a multiple, but a factor. So one number that they share that is multiplied in. Now, if I multiply that 3 back in, I should get to where I started. Does that make sense? If I multiply it in and get something different, then it's not correct. Okay, so that's a quick way to check to see if you're correct or not. Okay, so going over to part B, I'm going to write it out again. I'm going to write it in factors by complete factor form. So I'm going to have a 3 times a 2 times C plus 2 times 2. Now, it's c squared. What are the factors of c squared? C times c. You guys did this yesterday. When you multiply, you had no problem going c times c gives you c squared, right? So now I'm asking you to work a little bit backwards and think about it. Okay, so what can I take out? What's common? So definitely the 2 and, and the C. What are you confused about? Okay, so those are the numbers that are going to multiply. I'm breaking 6 down into factors. What are the factors of 6? So what two numbers multiply to give me? 
but that doesn't really help me because I know that four is not going to have a fit. So what are some other factors? I would hope you know that three and two multiply to get two fit. Okay, good. And then it's there's a variable in it, so that's where the C's come from. So if I went three times two times C, I should get six C. Okay. So I'm doing the four, I'm breaking the four down into its two factors, two and two. And I'm breaking the C squared down into its factors of C and C. So C times C gives me C squared. The yellow circles are the thing that's common between the first term and the second term. They're the things that they share. So they both have a two in them, and they both have a C in them. So that's what I'm going to take out. So I'm going to take out a 2C. So that's gone. Okay, what's left inside the brackets? 3 plus 2C. And if I multiply that 2C back in, it should give me the original. If you can see it, like I've done it a million times, so if it pops off the page at me, you don't have to write it out in factor form. That's just helpful if there's some numbers that are weird that you can't really see the factors yet. Why is it Because that's what we circled, that's what was common. There was a two in this one, there was a two in this one, so we like pulled it out and put it out front. And the C was common, so we pulled that C out and put it out front. And then what's inside the brackets is what's left. Okay. All right, so we're going to get bigger. We're going to go to a three term one. Okay. So if I'm going to write this out in expanded form, um, this one's just going to be five. And then I'm going to have minus two times five times z minus five times z times z. Kind of went into the other one. Probably should learn to write it smaller. Okay, what's common in this one? Five. No z, because there's a z here and a z here. But it needs to be in all the terms. So if there's three terms, it needs to be in all three of them. So five's the only thing that's common between all of them. So the five goes outside. Okay, what's left over here? A one. My first one's gone. So what are the factors of five? One and five. I didn't write my one. Okay, so if I take my five out, what's left? One. Okay, if I take my five over here, what's left? Minus two z. And then if I take my five out, what's left? Z squared. How come I didn't write my one here? I mean, I could. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want to put the one in, if that makes more sense to you. It's not wrong. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. So what do you think? What's the biggest number? There's another way to think about it. What's the biggest number that will divide into 12, 20, and 16? Sir? Yeah, four. Yes. Four. Two works, but four is the biggest, right? So we want to go with the biggest one, which is four. So once you know that, if you can do the number part of it, the letters come really easy. So if you do the number part, if you can do that, I'm going to have, are we taking out a positive four or a negative four? We could think of the negative four or a positive four, it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to take it a negative four. 
Okay, I'll take on the false report. I'll show you why. So it would be 4 and negative 3. And how many x's do I have here? 5. Well, x. x. Why do they use such a big number? Um, and I, I know, that's all me. And then I got a y. All right. All right. I got 4 times negative 3 times 5 x's and a y. I got 5 x's and a y, Mr. Perry. How many do you have? What can I do for you, sir? All right. So I got 4, and then I got an x. I got an x. I got a Y, and I got a Y. Woo! All right. Okay, what am I pulling out? We said, we said a four. We said a four and a four. So if you guys can do the numbers, the letters come pretty easily. So how many taxes am I going to take out? One. Because my second term only has one, of, one X in it. Okay, how many Y can I take out? Just the one because the first one only has one. All right, so I don't know. My computer is uh, working slow. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday, we don't want to rest things. So I took out a four. I took out an X and a Y. So I'm left with. Okay, do I have any Y's in that one? No, because no, I took it out. Um, what am I left with in the second term? I got minus 5Y and okay. So that's all the factoring. Now, you can do it with both writing all the factors down. When I look at this, I go, okay, that's a single y, that's a single x. So what you should notice is when you take that out, I'm going to take out that lowest variable, like the one that's, if I have x squared, if everything has a 2 in it, that'll do. Um, it's, oh, wait. So the thing is, is that you can do it in factor form. It's very, very visual when you do it there. It's easy to pick out. Um, if I had something with an x squared being the smallest one, like let's say this had a squared on it, this x was a squared, I know that if I take out x squared and x squared, those are gone. And there's five x's in this one, and if I take out two, how many are left? Three. So I know I'm left with an x cubed. And I think the more you practice it, the more that's going to leap off the page at you. Um, but if you want to write those in factors form, you don't have to, but it just makes sense to you do it. It doesn't take that much time, and you'll get really good at it because we're going to get more complicated in our factoring right away. Okay? All right, so you guys have a textbook assignment written on the bottom of this page. Okay, don't forget to review this book on Thursday. Is this all we're doing today? Do you have 